and make look like he's just ruling in proper brains. What's happening my fellow geeks and geekettes? Welcome to a brand new episode of Chris's Custom Collectibles. And today we are gonna be pimping out the Funko Pop Vinyl Zombie Captain America from Marvel's What If series on Disney+. Plus. I've been eyeing this guy for the longest time and I figured this would be a very neat little custom collectible in terms of really goring this guy up. And he's like the proper bobblehead. I do love the bigger pop vinyls. There's just so much more detail to work with. Case in point, Wally. Now also stick around to the end of this video because I'm gonna be announcing the winner of the Xbox Series S that I'm giving away for my eight years on YouTube video. Again, thank you all for your amazing support. Now like most custom collectibles, you don't have to go out of your way to make a figure look a lot better. There are only a couple of steps with this one, but the first step is we gotta take this bobble head off. It's on a spring. It just means a pair of pliers to kind of maneuver it off. And then we're gonna go in with a Dremel and Dremel out the eyes because we're going to be putting some eye inserts in. Now the eyes in question are coming from my good friend who is based in Germany by the name of Oliver Schwartz. If you guys remember videos and videos and videos ago, I did a shout out for Oliver because he sent me this amazing Tweety Bird, this hyper-realistic Tweety Bird resin kit that I painted. It's like Tweety in his old age and I love it. Oliver does some very niche sculptures and they're so brilliant and so lovely. And Oliver has now delved in to the realm of eye making and he sent me a bunch of eyes including some diseased, decaying zombie eyes. And they're actually a perfect match for this pop vinyl. So what we're gonna be doing is dremeling out the eyes and making sure these are gonna fit nice and snug and uh, fix them in place. We're gonna be using good old fashioned shoe polish to just to get a nice wash in there, get all the detail. And then we're gonna go in for the gore effects. Now amongst dremeling the eyes, I'm probably gonna go in and dremel out the nose and the mouth opening and the uh, sides of the cheeks here just to give it a bit more depth. But overall the tone is gore. It's funny, they've actually gone ahead and weathered the shield, which is a bit interesting. Like the rest of the figure's pretty clean, but they've gone ahead and uh, muddied up the shield. So that's an interesting one. But where there's like exposed bone, I'm just really Really excited because I want this thing looking absolutely disgusting and at the end we're also going to be going in with some bee queen resin and adding some drool effects I want as the resins curing to kind of string it down and make it look like he's just ruling in proper brains. so anyway with that being said the first step is we've got to start dremeling and we're gonna head over to the workshop so with that being said let's get to it oh it is time for some shit hey commentary as you can see there, I'm just screwing the head off. Now, for some reason, whenever I say I'm using my Dremel, it's actually my Ryobi rotary tool, I think, because back in the day when I first started using rotary tools, it was always a Dremel, but it's a Ryobi. Now, see what I'm doing there? If you guys don't have access to eye inserts or you want to use the pre-existing sculpts, you can uh, just grind in and engrave in uh, the pupils of the eyes and then you can go over them with washes and uh, glosses like acrylic glosses and stuff like that again if you don't have access to eye inserts and you want to use the pre-existing sculpt so uh, I, I real as you can see there um, we're doing a little test and on the right hand side I just got to go in a bit more to make it a bit more flush but now we're just going to be going in and uh, gutting the nose opening we've also got those cheek holes and the teeth but I did switch to a diamond head engraving tool for the teeth and that way you can get a lot more detail and get all the sharp edges in uh, uh, for, for the tops and bottoms of the teeth. Now, because this is a custom collector, we've got to use some good old fashioned black Kiwi shoe polish. We're not going to be watering this down. This is essentially just going to be a base wash. And that is going to act as getting into all those nooks and crannies, especially on his costume. He has all those beautiful lines, details, hard edges on the suit, but also soaking into areas of his skin where there's bone exposed and also on the shield, getting in all those hard edge lines there. And what I love about uh, using this method is we can build up layers on his skin, you know, that, that very light blue uh, tinge that he's got going on with his skin. We can then build it up with washes and stuff like that just to give it a bit more depth and make the skin a lot more rotted and decaying. And we're just gonna dab away the excess with the paper towel. You know how it goes. Now, also gonna be dabbing away the excess, but leaving a lot on the face where it can kind of cake around the helmet. Now, I'm just gonna get a titanium white from Liquitex, and we're gonna go back over the teeth and the gums. I'm not a fan of that uh, a darky aqua blue that his gum 
gums are down the bottom, I want to make them an actual gum color. Now for that we're going to be using a hot pink pearl from Model Masters. This is an acrylic one, I love this stuff. It's great for doing flesh tones, uh, coloring lips and stuff like that. And it's also a great starting base for the gums as you can see right here. Now we want to let that dry thoroughly because it is an acrylic and can also break down if water's added to it or stuff like that. But then just going to grab some brown shoe polish, again unwatered down and very carefully apply it on top of the teeth and the gums, it's going to soak in there beautifully and then we're going to dab away the excess and right there we've got a bit more realism when it comes to the rotted teeth and gums and when you uh, dab away the excess you've got that sort of white bleeding through with the teeth they just look absolutely disgusting. I'm very happy with how that turned out. Now I am going to grab that hot pink pearl again and this time it's for highlighting, especially on the skin, like on those cheekbones there, he's high cheekbones. This is really going to add a lot more depth to the skin and I'm going around uh, the eyes etc, just all over his exposed skin areas and be very sporadic geeks and geekettes. Now it's a little bit early, but we are going to glue the eyes in. Just cheap and nasty super glue, and I pre-position them. I want him looking in the right-hand direction uh, from his point of view, and just a couple of dabs will do you. This stuff sticks instantly. It bonds these two pieces instantly, which is great. Um, and the next step is a bit of an interesting one. It was very sporadic. So we're going to be using some liquid latex, some red Liquitex ink, and some Johnson's baby powder. And this is going to essentially act as the, the understructure of the nose and cheeks and mouth and stuff like that. So you mix these three together and then what we do is uh, brush it out on a surface that it's able to be peeled off when it dries. Now there was a bit of R&D and a bit of experimentation when it came to this. What you see here was not used. What I did uh, was actually utilize some natural latex undyed with the rest of it, but you'll see that later. We're gonna let that dry for the time being. But for now, I've just got some uh, brown student acrylic watered down, and this is for the mud effect, essentially. Yeah, this is zombie Captain America. He's gonna be a bit dirty, a bit muddy. And also what I love about adding a watered down acrylic to, to custom collectibles or anything in general is it automatically mats the piece. It, you no longer have that gloss sheen from the shoe polish. So I'm applying it everywhere, the body, the head, and also the shield. And I loved the effect it gave. Just that real muddy, dirty, he's just come out of the ground, fresh out of the ground for that matter. And again, it mats the piece like you don't have to go in with a matte spray or anything once you're done with this piece even though you know you can seal it up in this case with this video I don't seal it up I didn't feel the need to because it was it was pretty good like it, the, the paint wasn't going to come off anytime soon now I'm also going to get that same watered down brown acrylic and start spritzing it and flicking uh, random areas with the brush that I, I was essentially using again this is just for like splash up mud spray stuff like that all over the body, the head, the shield, and stuff like that. And it just adds a bit more depth. Now we're ready to uh, peel off our latex piece, but we've got to brush some talcum powder on it. Otherwise, it will stick together. Now see the top half? That is the part I utilized. I mixed the uh, undyed latex in with the rest of it, and it has, as you can see, a marble effect, like uh, like uh, like um, meat, like you know our meat you know, in, in our bodies and steak and stuff like that. It just has that nice marbling effect. So I just glued it on the inside, and there you go. It has like that fleshy layer under there. So I'm just gonna grab some Duramax Red Box spray paint and spray it in a cup. And I love using spray paint that's sprayed in a cup. I don't know why, it just seems to paint real easy when you need to do some hand painting. And this is essentially just like wounding up and goring up all the areas where there's exposed bone. And I love this, you can get so creative with this and you know, I figured it was time to glue the shield back on because I want to do the same method with the, the bristles of the brush and flick some uh, of that red spray paint onto the figure itself. And also screw the head back on. I figured we could also um, spritz some of that red spray paint on the figure itself just as like just some gory blood spray stuff like that. You know he's honed in and gnawed someone's face off and he's got some blood spray on him so I was really happy with how that turned out. And again, grabbing that same spray paint and going in amongst the wounds uh, on his cheeks, the nose and the mouth and stuff like that. Now, 
The final thing is we're gonna add some drool and I'm gonna be using some Bee Queen resin. Now the great thing is this uh, cures a champagne color. It's, it's clear but also dries a champagne color and just brushing it around the teeth and working it until it starts to kick and it kicks in about two minutes and once it was done it was dripping and it looks like he's drooling and salivating for his next victim and now we're ready for the final reveal. Now that was a fun custom collectible to do. Thank you so much for watching guys. Now, we have a winner to announce. As you guys know, a couple of days ago, I posted a video for my eight year anniversary here on YouTube and I was giving away an Xbox Series S and you guys had submitted your best Star Wars pun and what being a geek means to you. I have gone through all the comments and you guys are absolutely brilliant and the puns were oh so spicy, but the one I chose was from Mr. Max Chambers and he goes on to say, and it's an absolute fucking doozy. Chris, you must be filled with such pride for your BB-8 year. You're one in a million and just a wonderful cosplayer. You'll have to celebrate using your Endor voice. Even in the beginning, just as a Wookiee, you always found a way to do cooey stuff. Seeing this look of accomplishment on you makes me so happy for you. You're the best around, Cosplay Chris. Being a geek today is just another word for those who are concerned with this generation's mythology, with modern morals and preserving stories. We want to learn through our heroes because it makes us think and it helps us become better people. More like the fantastical heroes and heroines we imagine. We explore the truth in concepts in worlds with no rules so that we can learn how to make this world better. And superheroes look super cool. So duh, we dress up as them. Max, thank you so much, man. I will be getting in contact with you shortly to arrange to ship the Xbox out your way. Congratulations, my friend, and to everyone that commented and just your support over the last eight years. Thank you so, so much. Guys, wherever you are in the world, please have yourselves an absolute cracker of a day. I hope you will. Hope you're happy. Be merry, be silly. And until next time, geeks, please always remember, cosplayers do it best.